Hello, welcome to part 5 of the Taekwondo Science Series on Sine Wave Motion. In this video, I'll explain how the sine wave changes with various stances when you're performing a technique on the spot. In the last video, I showed you how the shape of the sine wave motion curve looks like this, when you're performing a technique on the spot using a stance with straight legs, for example, parallel stance, closed stance, or vertical stance. There's no bending of the knees, so there's no dropping of the body at stage one. And on stage two and three of sine wave motion, the raising and dropping of the body is done by raising and dropping the heels rather than by bending the knees. Notice that the value of H0 is equal to H1. This is because the body can relax without bending the knees so the body height will remain the same throughout stage one. And also notice that the value of H0 is equal to H3, and this is because the final stance will be the same as the initial stance, so the body height will return to the same value it started off with. With rear foot stance, the knees are already bent, but they will bend a little more as you relax, so the body will drop slightly. The knees shouldn't bend too much, as this will only put undue strain on the balancing leg. In rear foot stance, the hip to heel line is perpendicular, so the knee bending will have a big effect on dropping the body. But with L stance, fixed stance and sitting stance, the stances get progressively longer or wider, so the angle of the hip to heel line adjacent to the floor gets progressively smaller. So the knee bending results in having less effect in dropping the body. However, the weight distribution in fixed stance or sitting stance is 50% on each leg which makes it less strenuous to bend the knees. So the knees have a tendency to bend a little bit more compared to when you're in rear foot stance or L stance. The net effect is that the body will drop more or less the same in all these stances. So the shape of the sine wave curve will be very similar. When performing a spot technique in walking stance, such as movement 11 in Teigeitu, the weight distribution starts off at 50% on each leg. But Grandmaster Che Hong Hee taught us to load the weight onto the front leg and move the body in an elliptical path. As the body moves forward, it doesn't have to drop much in order to bend the front leg and load the weight onto it. So in walking stance, the body hardly drops at all, or only very slightly. But in some cases, for example, the second movement in Do San Tu, the body will drop slightly more because the body goes from a half facing position to a full facing position. And as I explained in the previous video, the body will be slightly lower in a full facing position compared to a half facing position. However, a common mistake is to lower the body too much. I often see people squatting really low as if they're trying to force their bodies to drop. The purpose of stage one is to relax and balance and load the weight onto the balancing leg if necessary. And squatting too low serves no purpose. It's definitely not relaxed. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's strenuous. The spot techniques in low stance, such as the 15th movement in Gebektul, will follow the same principles as walking stance, so the body will drop only very slightly. So in conclusion, when performing a spot technique without changing stance, the body only drops slightly, and in some cases not at all. So avoid dropping the body just for the sake of it. Allow the body to drop naturally as you relax. Now in the next video, I'll be describing sine wave when you're performing a technique on the spot whilst you're changing stance. So I hope you join me for that one. 